Hi, everybody. My name is Nick Muad. I'm the Chief of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery at McLaren Health System in Bay Region, Michigan. Today, I'm going to talk to you all about the use of polymer-based technology for the management of infrarenal abdominal aortic aneurysms using the Alto device. I recently used it on an elderly male who had a 5.5 centimeter infrarenal abdominal aortic aneurysm, and I was very impressed with the changes and improvements that have been modified based on the previous Ovation IX endograft. As you all know, per the instructions for use, the Alto endograft now has a 7 millimeter infrarenal neck indication, and it has a semi-compliant embedded balloon within it. As with previous polymer-based technology, I'm really impressed with a low-profile delivery system, 13 to 15 French, which is the smallest one out on the market. The reason for this is that with polymer-based technology, we're able to separate seal from fixation. Fixation is primarily obtained with a suprarenal fig uh, stent, and the seal itself is after administering the polymer through the appropriate channels, which ultimately gives you the seal. Having a 7 millimeter infrarenal neck indication has been really great. It allows you to manage challenging neck and hostile neck anatomies, even in the presence of calcium and angulation. This recent case that we did, like I said, was a 5.5 centimeter infrarenal aortic aneurysm uh, on this elderly male. And the conduct of the operation was a standard fashion, what we do for percutaneous endovascular aortic aneurysm technique or EVAR technique. After ultrasound guidance in the bilateral common femoral arteries, we placed percutaneous closure devices with proglides at the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock position, ultimately upsizing to eight French sheaths. After this, the infrarenal aorta, and actually the suprarenal aorta, was cannulated in the standard fashion, and we placed stiff uh, Lunderquist wires. From the ipsilateral side, I used the uh, Alto device without any sheath, so just bare back on its sheathless system, into the uh, suprarenal aorta. And from the contralateral side, we had a pigtail catheter. After appropriate magnification and identification of the renal arteries bilaterally, at this point, we deployed the suprarenal segment of the Alto endograft, after first using the semi-compliant balloon to allow for opening. Uh, at this point, you really can't see the graft itself other than the suprarenal stents, because no polymer has been administered. We were able to hug the renals uh, using the radio opaque markers at the level of the renal arteries bilaterally. And once we were happy with that, ultimately we were able to fix the polymer on the back table and ultimately administer this through the appropriate port. The ovation limbs have great flexibility and conform quite nicely to any iliac tortuous anatomy. At the completion, we ended up ballooning the bilateral limbs at the flow divider ensure appropriate distal seal to avoid any type 1B endo leak. And at the conclusion, we had a well-positioned endograft with complete exclusion of the aneurysm sac with no evidence of early or late endo leak. What I found after using the Alto endograft is multiple benefits. First, it has a 7 millimeter infrarenal neck indication. Two, it conforms quite nicely to any angulation or tortuosity with less than a 60 degree angle. Three, I was really happy with the offset limbs. This way makes it much easier to be able to identify the ipsilateral and contralateral segments for ease of cannulation. The polymer itself is rather radio opaque, making it easier to identify this on fluoroscopy. Of course, maintaining the crossover lumen is critical and difficult to cannulate aortic aneurysm anatomies. And so I really appreciated that by taking care of that with the standard wire and snare technique. And of course, the low profile sheaths with the separation of fixation and seal always makes it easy to be able to advance this into the aortic aneurysm proper and small access vessels, which allows you to treat a wider variety of patients. I hope this helped you all with the use of the Alto endograft. I was very impressed with it and plan on using it more to treat more patients.